Hey, hey, we are back at it. And tonight we are bringing you part two of 21 ways we made it 21 years. years. My husband and I are college sweethearts and we just celebrated our 21 year anniversary. Uh, we decided we were going to make a vlog about how we made it this far. People ask us all the time, and though our marriage is not perfect, we decided we put together a little list. We did part one where we explored one through 10 ways we made it, and tonight we are bringing you 11 through 21. So let's jump right on in. Okay, getting part two started with number 11. So what I have is understand that the needs of your marriage will change. So don't be shocked by it, don't be alarmed by it. It's something that is normal, it happens. Uh, we got married when we were in our 20s and when we reached our 30s, we were not totally this, the same. We're the same people at our core, but there's different things that change and evolve. Um, and so I know, and for example, maybe you all, as a marriage, maybe you go out with several other couples to dinner, right? You do that all the time. And one year you may look up and your wife may say, I, I don't wanna go out with couples. I want to go out with just you. I just want to talk, just us. And, uh, and so going out with couples goes out the door. Sometimes I can see people that creates a frustration at times, but don't be frustrated. Your marriage will change, expect it. And it's a good thing because I, I think it almost allow, it kind of forces you to relearn one another every so often. And it keeps the focus on each other where it should be. So that would be my 11 is to expect understand that the needs of your marriage it will change that's good all right i have number 12 and it kind of coincides with uh, your last one but it is uh spend time growing spiritually mentally emotionally even physically as an individual um, and continually bringing your best self to the table and to your union um, you know whatever drew your spouse to you whatever attracted them to you you were everything that they wanted and everything that they needed. But over time, you're gonna be presented with new challenges, new obstacles, new situations, and you're gonna to continue to, you're gonna to have to continue to evolve. You're gonna to have to keep uh, uh, reinventing yourself so that you are always at your best self. Um, you know, spend time growing spiritually. Make sure you're getting that word all the time. Make sure you are reading books or, you know, connecting with people that help grow you and stretch you so that as new challenges arise and new situations that you haven't experienced in your 22 year old self, you know, you're prepared and that you can take that um, as in your best state. So continue to grow uh, throughout the journey. Okay, so number 13, and now I'm gonna piggyback off of what you just said a little bit. So for number 13, I have uh, go to you school, all right? So go to you school. And what, I'm, what I mean by that is in conflict or in disagreement, it's very easy to look at what the spouse could have done or what they should, should change, right? And so going to you school, it means really just looking within yourself, which is all you can control anyway, uh, to see what you, can do even in response to something, say if, it, if your spouse was wrong, right? There is still a, a right and a wrong response that you can you can have to that. Uh, so going to your school really just, just turns that mirror back on yourself and um, puts the focus on what you actually can change. Go to your school. I mean, that's good because ultimately we're on the same team. You know, if you're going this way and I'm going that way and you did this and you did that and you did this and you did that. I mean, we're, we're ultimately going separate directions and we're not gonna win the game. Ultimately, we go back and I work on what I need to do, you work on what you need to do, and we come back together. We about to win this game. Take it all. Let's go. Let's go. All right, number 14. I kind of talked about this a little bit in the last part one. Uh, but I'm gonna come back to it and, and say, number 14 is get out of debt and stay out. At least live on a budget. Um, you know, we've all heard this before that one of the top reasons why marriages end in divorce is because of finances. Um, you know, the stresses and the burdens of, of finances and bills and debt and car notes and, 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 and credit card payments and, all of that is just, you just do not need it. It's just added weight that is just on your back and it's just not worth it. 
Uh, we've lived on a budget for our entire marriage. We've, we are on a lifelong mission to get out of debt and we are this close. We are so close. But I tell you, it's given us the freedom to enjoy our money um, and allow our money to um, work for us and for us to enjoy it the way we're supposed to. Instead of having it all, you know, um, strapped and it's already assigned before we make it, uh, we have a budget. We've lived on that budget. We know exactly every dollar has a designation and it really works for us. It's, it's taken a big load of stress off of our back and I think it's added to uh, the happiness and the peace that we have in our home. So it may not be popular, but boy, I tell you, it is, it is a golden nugget. Stay out of debt. Okay, for 15, I have, and this actually is a great segue out of your last one on talking about budgeting and debt, um, is have a joint banking account. And, and actually, I'll take it a step further um, from just banking accounts. I, I'll, I'll even say, even for like social media accounts or email, maybe it doesn't have to be a joint social media account, but definitely uh, your spouse should have the passwords total access to all of the emails, social media, computers, all of that. But um, for us, we've always had joint savings account, uh, checking accounts. Uh, we believe when we got married, we became one. So so our accounts should be, reflect that, right? So, uh, but definitely not even just financial, um, carry it over to everything. Um, and I, I, I can also say, you know, having a joint account, it allows us to just uh, avoid a lot of issues that can come up. You know, you hear stories where, you know, uh, one of the spouse, you know, spent thousands of dollars and ran up thousands of dollars of, of debt and the other spouse didn't even know about, about it. When you have joint accounts, joint cards and all that, you know, that becomes pretty impossible to, 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 uh, to do, right? Because everybody's aware, everybody has the same account. So having a joint account and also with your social media accounts, just keep everything um, open. You know, keep an open book between your spouse and you. Uh, it definitely uh, cause you to avoid drama. Love that. So good. All right, we're almost there. We're on number 16, and it is build the foundation of your marriage on the Word. And that is just the Bible. You know, um, marriage is founded by, by God. And the images that we are continuously uh, fed on TV and movies and media and songs is is it can really put a damper on what this, this union is all about. You know, love is patient, love is kind, love is forgiving, love believes the best. If you see any of these outside images on TV shows and you know, women are talking all kind of crazy ways to their husband and cussing them out and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get you told and I'm gonna take care of this. And you know, husbands are, I got to leave for a couple of days. I'm just out of here. You know, that's not what marriage is about. We're a team and we're together for life. And so we, I'm very careful about the images, the voices, the people that I allow to speak to me about my marriage or the images that I watch um, in regard to marriage because I wanna keep that image of what marriage is really supposed to be about, the holy matrimony right in front of my face and what that's supposed to be. Um, and it is not about cussing each other out. It is not about taking three weeks away and going having some girl time and getting, away. I need a break and all this. It's not about that. It's you in it to win it. And so the point is, is make sure you are uh, feeding your heart, your eyes, your ears, your mind with the things that line up with the Bible regarding your marriage. Number 17. So I have learned to say no. Uh, I sound harsh, but the outside demands and requests will come. Um, and it could even be from people that mean well, it could be from family members, requests that will people will make of you. Um, if you, if, you know, your gut, you don't feel like it's a good choice for your family or for your marriage, for you to do, you're gonna have to, you're gonna, you're going to upset some people as a, as a married couple, as a family, and you have to be okay with that. Learning to say no, I think, as we've avoided some serious pitfalls, um, some things that we've decided not to do, or not to allow our, our kids to do, or places to go, um, we said no to, and we feel like we've, we've avoided lots of pitfalls. So I, I would say that that one is, is going to be big, um, and you know, say it in love, you know, say you, know, you don't have to be mean about it, 
but definitely uh, learn, to, learn to say no. That's so great. And uh, husbands, I'll just give a, a little nugget. Um, I found uh, security in my husband being willing as, as the head to take the brunt for that, take the hit for that by being the one to say, my husband said, no, it's not a good idea, or him actually going forward and saying no. Um, Cause I know it's hard for the ladies sometimes to, to you know, I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. I don't want to make them mad at me, you know, but um, a, a lot of times he carries that weight and I'm grateful for that. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks for well, being the bad guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have 18. It is seek wise and godly counsel when necessary. Um, you know, you're gonna have challenges. Don't let anybody make you think you're not gonna argue, you're not gonna have tough times. It's gonna happen. Um, who you have in your ear, who you allow to talk to you or counsel you is really important. Talking to your friends and calling them up and saying, my husband did this and my husband did that. You know, you don't need somebody to tell you, Girl, you could do so much better by yourself. Girl, you could have any other man. Why are you staying with him? <laughs> or vice versa. And you don't need that. You need an objective third party sometimes that can speak to preferably both of you, hear both of your sides of the story. Um, we have great pastors. We have great friends that we can call and talk to. And we have talked to sometimes just a, a person that can hear us both. And I tell you, it, them hearing our situation that seems so hot and heated and hard, they hear it and instantly they have a remedy. And it just calms everything down. So, you know, don't wait until you are at 275,000 degrees and your marriage is on the rocks. Get that godly counsel when you need it. Don't be ashamed. Man, I know a lot of times it's tough for you to get a little help and I get that. Um, you know, don't call your wife's mama, don't call, so call a neutral person that is non-biased and that preferably has some godly wisdom and knowledge to give you a third opinion. That's a great one. And don't feel insecure about it because let me tell you, everyone has needed a tune-up in their marriage. Ooh, yes. And nobody is exempt, I don't care who they are. Um, so just, just understand that we all we all require that at some point so feel assured give me the, the wisdom and help that you need okay so for number 19 i have evenly divide the chores and the daily responsibilities of the home so i mean there's certain things that you know she's better at than i am um you know i may be able to shingle the roof i'm not going to ask her to come up there and shingle half of the roof with me but as far as you know vacuuming you know doing the dishes um she's a better cook than i am right so she cooks but then I, that doesn't mean that i can't help put away the dishes or help chop up vegetables or whatever she needs so just equally dividing those chores it just gives equal stake and everybody feels you know no one feels overworked or overwhelmed right so uh doesn't sound complicated, but it goes a long way. Evenly divide the chores. Yes. All right, two more left. I got number 20, and it is love your spouse, especially during the unlovable times. You know, when you when you sign on for this deal, you say you're gonna be there for better, for worse, for rich or poor, in sickness and in health, till death do you part. And when you sign on to that deal, you know, you are in La La Land. And of course you can sign that, that deal because it's everything's great. Everything looks great. Your, your thoughts and your ideas and your visions of this journey is great. But you do experience the, the, the other side of that sometimes. Sometimes you experience job loss. Sometimes, you know, you get sick. You go through menopause. You, you, you know, your hair turns gray. Somebody might pick up 25 pounds. The best gift that you can give your spouse is knowing them knowing that you're gonna love them through that. You're gonna learn, love them while they heal, while they get better, while they get back to their strong point. You know, we've experienced job loss or transition. We've experienced re having to relocate to a whole nother side of the country, changing directions and paths. And it's very challenging. Sometimes it will shake you to your core. It will bring out the worst in you. Um, but again, you have so much security when you put your head down at night, knowing that no matter what, your teammate is gonna be there for life through those difficult times. 
And I think that's the best gift that you can give your, your spouse is staying true to that promise that you made at the beginning. For me, divorce is just not an option. Whatever I gotta do to keep it, to keep it tight and to keep it right and to make this thing work, I'm gonna do that. Um, and, and the biggest thing is just loving through the whole thing. Love never fails, and I firmly believe that. All right, if you've been with us for part one and part two, you have made it to the countdown. We are into the most important, number 21. Of 21 ways we made it 21 years, this is probably the most important point. What you got? It is keep God at the center of your marriage. Uh, none of this really works without that. Um, and I we would even take a step further. You know, get connected to a church that teaches the Bible in a way that you both can understand it. Um, honestly speaking, we've enjoyed giving 21 ways we stay here. But truthfully, truthfully, there's no amount of steps that are good enough for every marriage out there. We're all complex individuals. We're all different. Um, you know, for us to say that we could give you 20 steps, you know, for staying married would be like someone saying that, you know, they could walk up to me here in the U.S. of A. and say, give me 21 rows that will take me from here to some remote village in Thailand. And that, that's not possible. You're going to have to drive to certain places. You're going to have to take many roads just to get to an airport. Then you're going to hop on a plane, fly somewhere, have a layover, fly somewhere else. You might get on a boat at some point. Um, there's lots of steps. And that really is not even an accurate analogy of, uh, of something that's so complex as a marriage, a life of marriage between two individuals. So, but God can navigate you through that. And you, you need that. You need the Bible, you need God to navigate you uh, through this uh, complex but yet beautiful uh, thing called marriage. Absolutely, we could not do anything with without him and uh, you know I'm submitted to my husband but more importantly I'm submitted to God we're both submitted to God and we keep him at the head of our life and you know we pray we read the word we do what we need to do to make sure we're connected because that is our foundation that is our source of strength that is our power and uh, we've just found great peace and joy uh, in keeping him um, as the head of our home and as the head of our marriage so um, that is our secret weapon. That's our secret sauce. I mean, <laughs> our secret sauce. When you think about it, I mean, it's not even like us as people to say, oh, well, let me just give up my whole life and give half of everything to serve you in, in marriage. I mean, that's not even in, in our natural being. That's not even something we do. So you know this thing that we call marriage. It had to come from, from somewhere else, someone other than us. And we know that it came from God. And, uh, Doing it his way is really the only way, I think, to, to have a lasting marriage. Absolutely. Let's do it for life. For life. Hey. <laughs> All right. And there you have it. 21 ways we made it 21 years. We're so glad you came to be a part of this celebration with us. We actually had a lot of fun putting it oh, together yeah. and sharing with you. I said it before and I'll say it again. We do not by any means have the perfect marriage, but you know, we're committed for life. We're on this journey and we're just committed to enjoying it and, and making the most out of it. So uh, feel free to add some comments down below of maybe some ideas that you have or some that maybe uh, helped you out a little bit. Um, but definitely subscribe and come back. We have great adventures uh, in the future. So we'd love to see you back for that. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.